balance wanting to get the story, wanting to scoop your colleagues, and then at the same time being um, uh, considerate of your subject's feelings and emotions. Again, I always ask myself, what does it mean to get the big story for the 6 o'clock news, but how am I going to feel about myself 10 years from now, and how is that person that I'm doing a story on going to feel about me? And sometimes when you're caught up in the moment, you don't think that far ahead. Right. You just want to get down, get that on the air, and by hook or by crook or whatever Because it it's your job to tell the story. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, I think when you have some deep-seated values, and, and just, you know, feelings about other people that transcends to your work. And again, television news doesn't always take the best parts of your values, mm -hmm. but you just have to breathe and, and, and think about it, and hopefully you, you make the right decision. What are those values you think that you have, or maybe traits, that, is, that are enabling you to last this long in this field? Okay, I think it's because I'm Filipina and I look 10 years or 15 years and I really am. <laughs> That's part of the longevity. Now, when I first started in television, they said, what's that high school girl doing on TV? Yeah. And I used to get really mad, but now in my older years, they think I'm still, no, mm -hmm. close to your age. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, I, think, I think that has been a really good plus. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, I think just... Um, you know, every every story is a, a lesson in life, mm -hmm. and so the journey has been many lessons, and I think just having the values of wanting to do a good story, being truthful, being honest with yourself, and at the end of the day, what is this story going to mean to me 10 or 20 years from now, and what kind of impact is it going to have on your audience? Are you telling them a story? Are you trying to, uh, you know, invoke some kind of attitude, and is it for the good? Right. And that's, that's, I guess, you know, my criteria. When you pick your stories. Mm -hmm. when, yeah. And I'm sure in the years of covering different stories and, and uh, shedding light on different issues, you've, you've come across some um, interesting ones. You mentioned that story about the Marcuses. Any other, perhaps, shocking story, most shocking that you've ever mm -hmm. covered? Most you know, you're talking about, yeah, well, I'll tell you one controversial story was uh, there was a time in Hawaii when there were two people that were supposed to be given, um, they were given the death sentence. They were the last two people that were supposed to be hung in Hawaii in the prison. And one of them had already died. I found the one that was still alive and I did a story on him. And at that time, Hawaii was in the legislature deciding the death penalty. And I spent an entire week with this person, and I did get some scathing uh, letters from the family because they were inmates that escaped a work line, went to steal food and a raincoat from a woman up in um, Nuwanu, okay. and she was tied up, and they didn't mean for her to, to, to die, but she was alone in the house. They left her, and she choked on it and died. And so, you know, I'll never forget the family said, how dare you glamorize my grandmother's death? Mm. And it really struck me again, but at the same time when I interviewed this person, and he did finally go to the legislature, and he was Hawaiian, and he did speak against the death penalty. It made you think, you know, in a very quick instant, your life can be decided and if you're not careful with the information that's at hand, you could be hanging a person that's innocent. Now, in this case, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to make that judgment, mm -hmm. but uh, they did get their sentence commuted, and they did have life after the death sentence. And that story did kind of stay with me for right. a long time. And when we talk about judging, you know, when we put ourselves out there as broadcasters, as journalists, we, we don't intentionally want to be judged, but then that's judgment for people. It's almost second nature. We judge what we see. It's always perspective. And how do you deal with judgment like that? When you mentioned that you got scathing letters from the family of the woman, um, how do you deal with negativity, with criticisms? You know, I think that's, again, the life lessons because each story has its own meaning. And that one, you know, when I, okay, when I, then and back then, I thought, oh, my gosh, what have I done? Mm -hmm. But looking back, you know, 25 years on, on that story, I, I, I'm glad I stood by what I did 
because I, I totally believe that you can, you know, give the death penalty to an innocent person. And in this case, it wasn't premeditated. You know, they were just stealing raincoats and canned goods, and they didn't mean for her to, you know, be alone and, and then to die. And so it wasn't like they went in and stabbed her to death. So, you know, I, I, I stood by what I felt was important, and till this day I think that story was had to be told.